Hello, hello, happy Friday. I do believe we are live everywhere we need to be. And we are recording. Life is good. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yay. Okay. Happy March. First, can you believe we've done two years, uh, oh, two years already this month, two months already this year. <laughs> and today I want to send a big shout out to my auntie Sylvia. She is my mother's younger sister and it is her 90th birthday today. So happy birthday, auntie Sylvia. She is in England, in Maidenhead, we were able to see her last, um, last uh, when did we go? September, um, September, October time. And that was a really special visit. We took her up to meet the great grand nephew. I, I'm, I'm never too sure whether he's my great grand nephew or her great grand nephew. But anyway, my nephew's son and daughter who was very tiny at the time so we have a full list of questions today so i am going to jump right in and before i go any further i am so excited to give you a glimpse of the grand new awakened hearts collection we have had so much fun working on this <laughs> in the last few weeks has also been a little bit of frustration hence phase two we have fabric on order for the quilt and who knows where in the world it is right now all i know is it is not here so we are still waiting on that fabric and i'm like shall i just figure out a whole new set of fabric that i want to use or do we keep waiting so We'll see. Until Monday morning, I'm waiting. And then on Monday morning, the decision is going to get made one way or the other. Okay, let me give you a glimpse of these guys. And right now, you could potentially see Reed AI meeting on the screen. I don't know what the heck that is about, but there we go. That is better. So... The Awakened Hearts come in three different sizes. They are currently available as pockets, um, purses, bags, whatever the heck you want to call these guys. We're calling them pockets. They will, when, um, when the fabric comes up, we're going to be stitching them all up as appliques as well. So you can use them as regular appliques. So we have small guys. These are... I did have all of the measurements. So these are about six inches tall, five inches wide, and they stitch up in a hoop that is 150 millimeters wide. Um, these are the medium sized guys, and these are, I think they're about six and a half inches wide. Um, they have varying heights, and then the large guys. So Starting with the little ones, they all have a zipper pocket on the back. And I wanted to put Minky on there. I was thinking in terms of having a little heart that you could cuddle with. That might sound a little bit on the strange side, but that was my thought. Having a little heart that you could cuddle with. Um, you could actually put some stuffing in here. So they all have a little pocket. They are all lined. And they have the closest thing to a surged edge that you can get using an embroidery machine. So that made it really super easy to have the whole thing stitched up in the hoop. The little pockets don't have an extra pocket on the front. They just have the zipper pocket on the back. The big ones and the medium ones, as well as having the zipper pocket on the back, they all have a pocket of some sort on the front. And my thinking here was that is a little place where you could put a note, whether it's a love note to yourself or a love note to whoever you're giving the little pocket to, um, a reminder for yourself, just a little pocket here so that you can tuck a little note in. Um, so the other thing 
most of the pockets actually say something inside them. This one says, never stop dreaming. You can't see it from the outside. You can see it when you're stitching. I think it's important, even though we can't see it, that we know it's there. We know there's this little reminder in there. This guy, look inside there. It says, dreams live here. So again, you've got that little pocket there. So this is heart number one. We have some really imaginative names for these hearts right now. And maybe that will change. Who knows? This is heart number two. This one is all about dreaming. So the smallest of them, again, we got the little zipper pocket on the back, the medium sized and the large one, the pocket here sits like there. This particular pocket or these, the, these two, I can imagine having them hanging on the wall, one for each member of the family and you tuck your mail or something in there. Anything that you want, little reminders. Um, you could even put your car keys in there if you have um, some, you know, if you're always losing your car keys, then have a place to put them so that you know exactly where they are. Um, so this this one, I think especially lends itself to that. Let's see. Number three is the tall guy. This is the tallest of them. And the small one has stitching as well as the applique band down the front. These two guys are a little bit more complex in their creation. They have a pocket coming in from the side that guy says believe inside of it. This is Carpe Diem, Seize the Day, and they have um, they, they have quite a big pocket here. I can actually see these uh, um, as, and I haven't actually tried this, but I'm going to right now. If you were to put, maybe not with the pop socket on the back of it, but if you were to put, and maybe not with a massive iPhone, but if you were to put a little snap on there, you can actually pop a, a, a uh, a phone in there, as I say, maybe not with a um a, a one of the giant ones, but if you have a smaller phone, then a snap in the right spot to stop it falling out could work on there. Okay, this one number four, I have actually kind of sort of got a name for it. I think of this as the wonderful world heart. It's got the sun and the moon and some stars, a few fluffy clouds, the rainbow and some flowers. So I'm thinking of this as the wonderful world heart. And this is the only one that has minky pocket on the front. This, this one also I can see hanging on the wall, one for every member of the family so that you can pop your little bits of things in there if you want to know where exactly where they are, cockies or whatever. Okay, number five. This is a love always. And this is possibly the simplest one to stitch up. It's just got um, beautiful swirls and feathers on there. These two have the pocket and they actually say something in there. This one says, choose joy, a, a reminder to choose joy in there. This one, live, laugh, love. This one, I had a vision of using it as um, a little ring pillow in a wedding ceremony. So last night, I actually stitched it up in white, um, white fabric, white thread. I did not have any white minky to put on the back, but I did have this really pale um, pink, and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It just has so much texture in it, no color needed. I absolutely love the way um, th this turned out. And I can see having um, a little pocket here to put the rings in, in a wedding ceremony. So anything is possible. This is the sparkly jewel heart. Um, 
we wanted a jeans pocket just to do something a little bit different. So this has the jeans pocket shape and we've got the kind of like the, if you think of um, gems, diamonds, they've got all of the different facets and that's what we were going for with all of the different colors. Judy and Wendy and Joe were over, I think it was it Friday last week. Um, and Judy had this one and she said it was kind of like um, putting together the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, figuring out which piece went there for the applique. I thought that was really fun. Okay, last but not least, we have number seven. This is the whimsical swirly heart. And it's actually the only one that the medium version of it is completely different to the other two. Um, th this one is a solid front. These two have a big pocket here. Um, we've got this beautiful sun applique on the outside. There is the pure stitching version of it on the inside. And this one reminds me of a carnival mask. The eye here, somehow there's an eye going on over here, but if you imagine putting that as a carnival mask and hiding away and know that miracles happen inside of there. So those are the awakened hearts. When we um, have them as appliques as well, um, fingers crossed by March 28th, I'm giving myself hopefully plenty of time to make that happen when we eventually get some fabric or the fabric that we've requested. Um, there are two different ways that you can do all of these hearts as appliques. One is with the pocket and one is without the pocket. So lots of different options. I can see them going all over the place and I hope that you guys love them as much as we do. I did see see a couple of comments coming through in the chat. Let me find that. And um, Christine, it's their anniversary today, St. David's Day. Five years. Happy anniversary, Christine. Okay, Joe said all the colors Sarah used on these hearts are absolutely beautiful fairy cross frost colors. <laughs> if that was some bribery, she would share with us the color names. And thank you, Marilyn, who is my um, amazing instruction checker. They are all listed. We did list all of the colors in the... Um, in the instructions. So Cindy said tooth fairy pillow. Oh my goodness. Yes, that absolutely. Tooth fairy pillow with a little spot to put your tooth in there and a little spot to receive the tooth fairy's bounty. I love that idea. Okay, so we have introductory pricing at the moment because we've only got half the collection available, but I was so excited. I didn't want to keep it to myself any longer. <laughs> um, so everything is included it, with the introductory pricing. You just have to wait just a little bit before we've got the applique designs included. And I'm actually doing the videos. Um, I started working on the videos this morning, so those will be coming in the next few days, certainly next week, as um, as they all come together. Okay, let's see. We had quite a few questions, so I am going to jump in. Let me see who's the first person to ask a question. I have got too many things going on on my computer screen here. I'm going to pop that over there so I can see. Let's see. Virginia. Virginia is not actually here, but she has um, a question. Does resizing a design create complications? 
Um, we've talked about this before, and it's always worthwhile talking about it again. On the whole, applique designs, I do not recommend changing the size of those. Um, it can have the potential of doing all kinds of funky stuff, especially um, the applique shapes. Uh, you're going to need to change the applique shapes as well for your cutting software if you have that. Um, the other thing that I don't like, or the other reason I don't like changing the size of applique designs, especially shrinking them to make them smaller, is your satin stitch, if it is a satin stitch edge, or a candle looking stitch, whatever the edge stitch, it's always going to shrink as well. So you might not have very good coverage. So on the whole applique designs, I say don't change the size of those. And if you were to go into the software, if you feel confident in the software to change them, um, there's still potentially lots of things that um, you're going to need to change. For instance, if you're going to change the satin stitch width or the finishing stitch width, then, then there's other things, a triple stitch that I'd like to put around both sides. That is going to need to change as well. So typically don't resize an applique design. Quilting designs, on the other hand, are scalable, um, either in the software or in your embroidery machine, because those, those are single stitch quilting lines, and there's really nothing that can go wrong with that for resizing it, whether you want to shrink it down or enlarge it. So go ahead and resize quilting designs as much as you like, uh, but don't resize the applique shapes. A uh, quick question here from Lorraine, who is watching on YouTube. Hi, Lorraine. And hi, Cheryl, as well, for, who is in Texas watching us on YouTube. Um, the difference between the Awakened Heart Collection and the Awakened Heart Beginner Collection, the complete collection has absolutely everything, small, medium, and large hearts, pockets, appliques, everything that is going to be included the beginner's collection has appliques and pockets, but only for the small hearts. So if you have only got a hoop that's 150 by 260, then um, the beginner collection is for you. If you have a bigger hoop than that, then the full collection is for you. Okay, let's see. Barb. I don't see Barb here. And she is, um, I think asking about the magnetic snap hoop monster. She hasn't used it yet and is wondering how easy it is to use. Super easy, um, especially for quilting in the hoop. It is fabulous because you can get the entire quilt sandwich into the hoop without having to worry about it popping out. Um, really easy to use. I wouldn't use it for applique because it might have a tendency to slide as you're getting the hoop on and off the machine, which you will be doing if you have an applique design. But for quilting in the hoop, we love the Snap Hoop Monster for... Um, for, for quilting, makes it really easy to maneuver the quilt so that you can get your alignment perfect. Okay. Karen is, um, Karen is here. Karen, I am very happy that you are here because you thought you might be at your doctor's appointment still. And she is, Eager to see the temperature quilt progress. So, Christine, I am coming to ask you to unmute here. And I'm really hoping that you brought your temperature quilt to show us and give us the March update. <laughs> um, yeah, February is not finished. Unfortunately, I had to go to work. Um, Gosh, and darn I, it, that work just gets in the way. I, it really is. It's a yeah, it's an absolute nuisance. Um 
Hang on. Because I had to change some of it. What did you have to change? Okay, they, um, these were too big and I was having hmm. trouble getting everything so that it would fit in. So I had to go down just a tiny bit on these. So we've got that far. Okay. Looking good. Um, the this is one of your quilting designs from uh Yellow Submarine. Okay. Um, wow, thank you. That is but, very cool. So because I like the sort of up and down, you know, but to represent temperature. Uh -huh. Um I decided that all round the outside, eventually, we'll have the wider double border. I don't know if you can see that. It's um, It actually was better when you had it a, a little bit away because you've got the light coming on it. Um, it's hard to see the detail, but I, we can definitely see that it's wider. So, basically, this one is the same... It's the middle one, but there's two of them. Mirrored. Okay, cool. So that that will go. Um, February is done up until I think the twenty fourth. So you're still having cold days over there. Yeah, I mean. There's not much variation. It's, yeah, sort of eight, nine, ten, um, lots of rain, loads of rain. How um, many colours have you used in there so far? Five. Okay. Out of? Twelve. Five out of twelve. That's not bad going then for two months. Yeah. So I'm hoping... Um, there be maybe towards the end of March a bit more, a bit more variation, because it would be, be nice to days. start get getting some greens in. So I've got my fe February strip already. Okay, cool. So I'm hoping because I'm working tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that we should um we we should not land on you a Friday before a weekend. Well, I was hoping to get this done at the, at this the, for the end of the month. And and I thought, you know, but then I was messing about with simply dreaming and then I've been asked to work tomorrow um on one of the old London buses doing a wedding. Wow. <laughs> now, in London or in no, Brighton? No, Brighton, over at Lewis. Okay. That's like six miles down the road from where I used to live. Yeah. Lewis. So that's, yeah, I was asked to do that. And so there's this old London route master, you know, with the open back platform. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I hope you have some beautiful weather for that. I don't. The forecast is terrible. Oh, no. It's really awful. It's like wind and rain and, yeah. Oh, no. Well, have fun anyway. <laughs> and we'll maybe catch up with you at our next Zoom call in a couple of weeks with the complete February yeah. update. Yeah, because actually once um, once it's cut... And it just needs piecing together, really. That that doesn't take long. And you do but, you're doing how many six days at a time? Yeah. In one hooping. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually a surprisingly fast, isn't it? Once mm. you get the hang of it, to get the flying geese blocks quilted yeah. up, or yeah. geese stand quilted up. 
so it's it's quite quick. But I was thinking as well, um, the back of it, that although there's batting in between, it's quite flat. Mm So -hmm. I, I think what I may do, um, when it comes to putting the backing on, I may put another layer of batting. Yeah, that's the one Because it... challenge. The um the three D quilt is quilted in the hoop, so you've got a stabilizer with batting and then your background fabric. So the, the flying geese blocks, you've actually got the piecing going on there. We also put an extra layer of batting behind it once it's all being pieced together. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we do actually Yeah. have that extra layer of batting because it does tend to flatten out everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's actually interesting because even on the hearts, there's um, on the pockets, there's actually a piece of batting in here as well. And it, it's one of those really interesting things when I... When I was doing free motion quilting, just regular free motion quilting, I used to love to use the um, the Quilter's Dream wool batting because it's a fairly high loft and you get some really nice Trapunto-like effects. When Yeah. you put it in the hoop, it goes as flat as a pancake and you Yeah. totally squash everything out of it, um, which is why we took to using the Quilter's Dream Orient, which is now Quilter's Dream Bamboo, because it's low loft to begin with and it gives you that nice texture. But if you've got the bat, if you've got stabilizer on it, if you're if if you're actually quilting in the hoop on a piece of stabilizer, then Yeah. um it, it tends to have that flatness. So we do typically put an extra layer of batting behind it, and Because that that's gives the you um the quilt has dream the bamboo. Yes, yes. So it's event it's Yeah. essentially got two layers of the quilter's dream bamboo in there. Yeah. Yeah, So but I think as it as it comes along, I mean the only issue I did have was getting, you know, the end pieces lined up. Um So I'm curious about that because the diamond and the square blocks are four inches square and the geese blocks are two inches wide and four inches tall. Yeah, my my diamonds in the square are slightly smaller Okay. because it just it just wasn't working. So when it comes to the end here, you've Uh huh. just got a, a plain piece to line it up, really. Okay. So, yeah, but I You think know, it works. once it's Once it's all put together and then you've got that wide sashing going all the way round, Mm hmm. I, I think that'll be fine. Yeah. Now, um, Something to consider if you do it in a different year, you could actually put a little bit more space where you've got your year number. So make Yeah. that a little bit longer. Yeah. I, yeah, I would probably do that. Oh, and the But... background of that is your quilting as well. <laughs> it's looking fabulous. So, Beautiful. yeah, Okay, well, March I just 15th, want if to you're use here, some different we'll be colors. here. Say again? Sorry, What, I just what, want what to did use you? some different colors. <laughs> you have to talk to the weather gods for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a quick thing in the chat from Marilyn. I think it was... Um, Last week they had 80 degrees and then 35 degrees with sleet, rain, sun, and clouds. We've actually been kind of up and down here largely. So we had our first dust storm of the year. Um, I can't remember. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, all of the emergency warnings go off. It's like, oh, my gosh, the phone's bleeping, the watch is bleeping. Everybody's phone's bleeping when these dust storms come through. So...
we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. To see February. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christine. <laughs> You're welcome. <gasps> okay. Karen, that was the update for you. Let me see. Kim has a question. I am so happy that you guys are using using the quilting designs in places that they weren't designed for. Um, Christine is doing that with her temperature quilt and Kim, it turns out, is also going to be doing that. Um, so Kim says, I'm wanting to use the quilting designs that were used in the corner section pieces of Yellow Submarine. Um, and with Yellow Submarine, we actually had those corners on a checkerboard grid, which was pieced. Um, so that had lots and lots of alignment points all built into it. But what if you plan to make something that is solid and doesn't have those? So Kim, your, um, your first thought of using water soluble stabilizer, drawing a grid on that, basting it to the quilt sandwich, and then using that as a guide, I love, and that's exactly what I would do with one minor change. I okay. wouldn't use the water soluble stabilizer because that will get very gluey. I would now let me just ask you one thing Are you thinking of marking up the quilt top before it's layered and basted? No, or I was going to layer and baste it. It's, it's going to be in a garment. Okay. And so I, I wanted it to be quilted both sides. And if possible, I want it to be reversible. So I got to work that out. Yeah, but that's why I thought the water soluble, when it's washed, it would dissolve. If it's if it's a garment, then yes. If, if it was a whole quilt, I would say that that's going to take you such a long time to get the water soluble stabilizer out. But if it's a garment, that's going to be much smaller. So yes, then that's a brilliant way of doing it. So okay. mark up the water soluble stabilizer first. Use that as your grid and then wash it out. Yeah. Now, um, you could also use a heat soluble stabilizer. If, I haven't um, seen those. Does OEST have one? Um, I think, no. I think the one that I've seen is Floriani or RNK. Okay. Um, what? So let's, um, you're marking up the stabilizer and then you already have your quilt sandwich, right? Right. And then are you thinking of putting the stabilizer on the top of the whole quilt sandwich or Well I haven't decided that yet. If there's a the bottom there, or... out, there might be a problem, I might put it on the inside. So, you know, it, it may take soaking it in, in water and then running it through a wash cycle possibly too and to get it out. If there's gonna be any possibility that it's gonna get gunky or have residual left on it, then I would put it on the inside so it wouldn't be quite so obvious. Well, if you put it on the outside, either on the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter which, but if it's on the outside, then there's no reason why you couldn't use just a regular tear away. But and when the then quilting... to mark the stabilizer up, you, you've got your quilt sandwich over here, you've got your mark stabilizer over here, put it either on the top oh. or the bottom, and stitch your grid lines and then get rid of all of the stabilizer and then do your quilting. I and see. then you don't okay. have to worry about any stabilizer inside that needs to be washed out. That sounds better, a lot better. Um, because if you, if you think about it, if you were gonna have the stabilizer inside the sandwich, then at yeah. some point you've either got the top not attached to the batting or the bottom, the backing fabric not attached to the batting. 
In which well, yeah. case, you could just mark up the top by itself. Right. Yeah, because it's gonna it's gonna quilt all three layers: the top, the batting. I'll probably use the bamboo batting, and then the um the backing. It'll quilt through all three layers, so it can be seen yeah. from either side. And you'll also, if you make up your quilt sandwich and mark it with stabilize the sat on the top, then that thread marking will also do a really good job of basting everything for you. True, true, yeah. And it should be really simple just to rip the stabilizer off once you've used it. Yeah. Once, once you've done the marking. Okay. Well, I think I think I might use I think I might use water soluble thread on the the base the basting because um and I, then I would only have the back to pick some pieces that might stick because the quilting would go over the lines you know because mm -hmm. you work with when you work with that design you've got three or four squares going both directions when you're placing that design there so that's why i was thinking of that yeah the grid actually i if i remember correctly we've actually got two different versions of the quilting one is for the smaller hoops in which case you've got a three by three design yeah. Which is a six inch grid. And the other version is a four by four design, which um you need the eight inch it's essentially an eight inch grid. Yeah. I I think I used the larger design, but but then if I I use regular thread in the bobbin and the water soluble on the top, water soluble would come out of the top and I should be able to just slide the bobbin thread out of those areas if uh, if they're stitched over but with the quilting it would make yeah. it a little bit easier yeah that, okay. that should work really well um Great. marilyn popped in the chat oesd does have a heat soluble stabilizer called heat to go okay i'll look for that thanks marilyn and red rock thread has it yeah, I didn't know about that one. I'm pretty sure the one that I've had before is either Floriani or RNK. Okay. Well, I, I've never seen it, but I usually buy online, so I don't. I'm not one to go in and just see what everybody has because I usually wind up walking out with a whole lot more than I wanted to just get when I went in. So it's, it's safer, easy to do, online. isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm excited that you found a completely different use for the yellow submarine designs, and I'm really excited to see what you do with it. Well, um, I am uh, really excited to try to start working with that. It's an idea I've had for a while, and when I switched, when I stitched that out on that yellow submarine quilt, I just thought that particular quilting design and how that all worked, it was just so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I thought that would be really pretty in a garment. And, uh, mm. you know, because that's something your people see when, when you're up close with people and the quilting was just so pretty. You could almost do something with just the quilting and not have to worry about anything else. But, yeah, it, it was it, that one was outstanding. So and I'm, I'm going to so have a lot of fun with it. your new with your new collection. All those hearts. There's so many possibilities. My mind was already thinking of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a reason why on the sales page it says, you know, on the applications especially, you've got quilts and table runners and placemats and a hundred other different things because I don't know if I'm ever going to have time to stitch up all the ideas that we've got for them. So, yeah, well, glad I you like it. Yeah, do I have a I I I will never get everything stitched up that I want to make or use all the fabric I have or use all the patterns I have. <laughs> you know what? Well, that's a really good problem to have, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. So thank you, Sarah. I appreciate your help. You are welcome, Kim. Have a good oh, weekend. Okay, thank you.
Okay, let me see. Judy. Judy, Judy. Judy was here just 10 seconds ago. Um, oh, there we go. Zoom is showing you not by your name, but by your, your email, email address. <laughs> I have your water bottle sitting on my kitchen counter right over here. <laughs> I haven't been to Chandler yet. <laughs> it's going to be there. It might be yours forever if I don't get there. Well, you know what? I It did occur to me. So Heather is actually coming over this afternoon. And if... If you're going to be around, I, I'm not altogether sure when she's going home, but I think she's going home on Sunday. And so she's going to be driving I-10 from Phoenix to Tucson, passing right through Cass Grant. If you guys potentially could meet up and I could have her deliver um, it for you. Yeah. You know, Sarah, just keep it there and I will make arrangements. It's, I'll get there. And if not, it's yours. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So where do you find the fabric requirements for the 3D mini design? You know, I was having a look at that earlier and I was going to say, you know, the fabric requirements and the cutting is all in the instructions folder. And then I looked at the document and sure enough, the cutting instructions are all there and the colors and all of that, but it doesn't actually tell you how much fabric you need for each piece. Right. So, it's going on my list. Okay. <laughs> Fabric requirements for 3D. Mini. Mini. I apologize for that. That totally slipped through the gaps. And I was, because I looked at the maxi document and it's like, okay, the, the maxi document does have the actual fabric requirements in mm -hmm. there. Um, it ha you know, it has the yardage for each piece. The mini quilt doesn't actually require all that much fabric for any of the colors. You know, some of them are literally just scraps. The background, and I'm looking at the one that I've got over here, the background and um, the main outside border are possibly going to be the only pieces that go up to half a yard. Um, but I will get that updated for you so that you know. Okay. What you need. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you. Okay. Let me see. Juliana is not here. Um, Juliana had a similar question to Virginia about resizing the designs and let me see. I've just lost a question. Okay. How much larger can I enlarge one of the patterns in the Awakened Hearts collection to make a coaster? I'm going to say, I don't know that you need to enlarge any of them. You've got three different sizes already. Um, the little guys are five inches wide. Um, and depending on which one they're... I, I don't know, five to six inches. I think the tallest one is seven inches. Um, so Juliana, if you're listening to this recording, maybe send me an email about that because I'm um, not so sure that you're going to want to enlarge one. And I don't really advise enlarging, especially the ones with the pockets on them. Um, that That has the potential to run into all kinds of different problems and challenges. Okay, Dawn is here. Dawn, I'm coming to ask you to unmute. Whoops. And I will add you to the spotlight. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great, thank you. So the piped binding on the 3D collection, and we used the one inch wide um binding on there because i wanted it to have i actually wanted it to have a one inch border but it was gonna pr 
present challenges getting it quilted. So I figured, you know what, we'll just put a one inch wide binding on there. And I always add a piping. We actually have a class um, that will teach you exactly how to do the pipe binding. I'm gonna pop the link for that in the chat for you. And I think you will find once you've learned how to do it, um, it shows you how to do it using a half inch wide binding. You're just going to modify the size of your pieces uh, of the binding strip. So for a one inch wide, uh, no, for a half inch wide, typically, let's see, we're gonna multiply it by three, however much your finished thing is, multiply it by three and then multiply the result by two. So for a three inch binding, half, no, oh my goodness. A half inch binding, we're gonna take a half inch times three, which is one and a half, multiply that by two because it's folded in half, gives you three inches and then add, let's say a quarter of an inch to a, allow for um, a bit of wiggle room for when you put the, bind, uh, the piping on. So for the, one inch wide, you're gonna take one inch times three is giving you three inches, multiply by two because it's folded, that's gonna give you six inches, add a quarter of an inch for your wiggle room is gonna give you six and a quarter inches. So that's the only difference. Um, so the instructions for the quilt have all the dimensions of the binding pieces that you need and the class will tell you exactly how that how you're going to go and do it. And I think once you learn the technique, you're going to love it and you're going to want to use it everywhere. Great. Thank you. Um, can you I just ask you one other quick question? Absolutely. Um, I, I was I'm working on the middle right now. And it says that you in one of your videos, you said, like, after you do the sixth section in the main panel, you might want to trim it before you do the flowers. Yes. Do you, do you also like recommend should I put the borders on then, or no, okay, no, just trim the panel. So yeah, and the reason for that um, is on this one by the you you get to a certain point where everything is done, and the only thing left is to add the three D flowers, right? And the three D flowers are all in the center. Um, so if you trim at that point, it just makes the trimming a lot easier because you can get the ruler flat on the quilt. If you wait until you stitch the flowers on there, then you have to kind of trim around the flowers. Okay. So typically I, I say keep everything as small as possible, as long as possible, which is why I wouldn't add the borders on there at that point. Um, but yes, you can definitely trim it to the correct size. You want to be careful that you're not um, fashioning the edges around a bit so that they fray, but they shouldn't do because you've got a quilt sandwich going there. Um, and that, that it just makes the trimming a lot easier and you can easily add the flowers onto the top of it. Okay, great. Okay, so you'll put the class in the Comments. Yes, I just popped the chat, um, the class oh, in great. the chat there, the link for the class. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome. Okay. Yeah, if anybody has not tried the no hands pipe binding, we use it on just about everything. It adds that little extra wow factor to all of your quilts. Um, and there is no hand stitching required, which is one of my um, one of my reasons for loving it. Okay, let me see. Ruth has questions about the heart to heart quilt. Ruth, coming to ask you to unmute. Hello. Hello. Let me just find you and add you to the Spotlight. Hello. Now you're in France, right? Yes. I'm happy to see you here. It's not too late in the evening. Now it's no almost 10, but I just ran down 
three floors and back up with the uh, transformer to plug in my computer. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't have the right uh, plug adapter, so. We had that problem going over to Sweden this last year. Uh, we went to England and I usually, going to Sweden, my dad has everything. And it never occurred to me that going to England, my dad wasn't going to be there. Mm. And so we we wound up having to go on a trip out to the closest boots to get a thing so we could plug phones and this, that, and the other in. <laughs> Sometimes hard to find. We, and we are... Um... We've moved here. It's been almost three years, but we're still just such a mess with the plugs. So, yeah, yeah. it's like everywhere in Europe needs a different plug. So, right. Yes. Yes. For sure. And you and the U.S. uses 110 and here it's 220. So mm -hmm. that's a big difference, too. Yeah. But the Bernina works. The Berninas work. No problem. You know, when I I have a Benina 801 Sport that my mom and dad gave to me for my 18th birthday. Wow. And I was determined that any kids that I had were going to learn to sew on this machine. <laughs> and so when Heather was born, I actually brought the machine over here. And then, yeah. of course, it's an English plug with English power and all of that like you just said i had to buy a transformer which is almost as big as the embroidery or the sewing machine itself they, and make them the they learned yeah by the time they wanted to learn to sew i had the eight series machines and they did not want anything to do with anything lesser or lower in the embroidery machine range so anyway so Wait, well, transformer inside just like a computer right Say again? I think the sewing machine that has the transformer internally, right? The the new ones do, yes. But the the one for the 801 sport, um, so let's see, 18. Right. That's a long 16, time ago. So that would have been 1985, not to right. give my age away. But um, yeah, 1985, they did not have the transformer inside the machine, which is why we had to buy one right. in order to plug it yeah. in. So anyway. So you are working on the heart to heart quilt. I'd like to. I want to. So I I am very confused about um you know putting stabilizer when you're quilting in the hoop. I've never done that. I've only quilted in the hoop without stabilizer. So yeah. to make the actual the, the full blown twin size quilt, right? There shouldn't be any stabilizer in the hoop for the quilting part of it. Good. Good. Um now, one thing that we did there, so for the heart to heart quilt, you're essentially working on, I think they're 14 inch blocks. So you're going and to I do the heard. applique first, mm -hmm. right? And then there's some piecing to do, I think for all three sizes of a heart. And you're essentially going to end up with a 14 inch square that you're going to layer with some batting and some backing fabric. Okay. Right. And you're going to quilt the quilt sandwich. Now, because a 14 inch square, even if you've got a couple of inches around the edge of extra backing and batting fat extra batting and backing fabric, that's not a great big thing. Um to get situated in a hoop, especially if you're using one of the larger hoops. So what you'll find in the heart to heart instructions is instructions for using a piece of template plastic. And you're basically going to make a piece of template plastic to fit your hoop. Um, or you're, you're going to put it into your hoop, cut a hole out of the middle of it and then you can put the you can position your quilt block or quilt sandwich oh, in that opening in that space so that the the template plastic is giving you a place to attach to but the hole in the middle of it is going to let you quilt through all three layers without having any stabilizer involved okay does that make sense sort of so what I'm actually doing is I would actually 
recoup what I could manage of the block itself plus the template on top with the opening cut in it? Well, um, you're actually going to, I think for the, the way that we did it, um, and it's, it's a fair long while ago, but um, because of the size of the blocks and because of the size of the quilting designs, unless you have a lot of excess batting and backing fabric, um, oh, it's it really was, hard uh, to get into the hoop. Right. Right. And have the hoop secure. So you and I don't have any template plastic to hand. Otherwise I would show you, um, maybe for March 15th, I can get some template plastic in That'd be great. That'd be and, great. And, and I'll show you, but literally get a piece of template plastic and let's see, cut it to the size of your inner hoop. Oh, you actually hooped the plastic. Yeah. What? Yeah, you actually hoop. Well, I'm actually you don't hoop the plastic. If you get a piece of template plastic, mm -hmm. sit it on the table, put the inner hoop on top of it, draw around the outside, cut out the excess, and then use tape to hold right. the template plastic to the bottom of your hoop. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then cut a hole out of the template plastic. Actually, cut a hole out of the template plastic before you attach it to the inner hoop. And then you've essentially got a piece of template plastic in the hoop. It's not going right. anywhere. Okay. You can use it okay. over and over and over again. And your quilt sandwich, you can attach it using tape to the inner hoop, but you've got the hole in the plastic so you, you can do the quilting. Okay. Okay. Good. Good to know. Good to know. And then do you have a video of that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we do not have a video specifically for the heart to heart collection that at, we actually released that before we started, but I'm kind of thinking that um, it, it really could use a video. Maybe let me think. I might, um, let me see about using that same technique in the Awakened Hearts okay. collection for the quilting. Um, even if I have to make up a different block to go in there, because I think it's actually a really valid way of quilting smaller pieces. Right. Especially, you know, in heart to heart, because the pieces are all joined using sashing anyway. Well, that was in my other question. So once the the pieces, the block is is ready to get the sashing. Has it been embroidered all the way through the the backing too? Yes. So isn't that a little bit uncomfortable? No. Okay. Let me see. It it comes to something when you're texting somebody who's upstairs, but well, Jasmine is upstairs. I'm oh, going to see if you can great. actually bring ah. the quilt down. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I came on. Um, was, we're staying up to 10. <laughs> but that's really good. That's good to know. The template thing, I have to wrap my brain around it. But I it have does time. Take, it does take a bit of getting used to, but once you've, once you've actually seen it, I think you'll see that it works really well. I'd love to see it. And I, I have time because it's really just for my grandkids who are, you know, they're little still. So one is six and the other one's four. I mean, I have a little bit of time. It's yeah. not like they're, they're going to grow out of that right away, you know. Let me write myself a reminder. That'd be great. That'd be great. Even a photograph of how you did that template would be really good. Well, one of the things about the templates is that they are disposable and we moved since making the quilt and threw out so much oh. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's super easy to get some new template plastic and um and okay. yes, so definitely for next next time in a couple of weeks I can um show you what what's what. Um And the bigger of the three hearts in that collection, does it fit in the the new 
uh, medium size. Oh, we don't, we wouldn't want to use that because it doesn't have an inner hoop. It's the new medium clamp thing, you know, but th that doesn't have an inner hoop. So it'd be better to use the, either the midi or the maxi or the large. Well, you know the, um, so it's nine inch square, right? Yeah, but only stitches, I think, to about eight inches. It doesn't really stitch all the way to nine, you know. You might try using that to do your I quilting. love that. I do love the hoop. I could yeah, measure might, what it does. That might actually work. We did a we did a design on um on a block yesterday to see how big we could go, you know. And I'm pretty sure it went about eight inches. Okay, as long as the design fits in it, that might actually be a good way to go. Okay. Because you, a 14 inch block with a couple of inches on either side of it is going to be nine, uh, 18 inch square, right? Right. Yeah. So you might be able to get what you want to quilt in the right spot on the hoop. It would be worth trying it. Okay. Hold jazz. You just can't. Um, Heather's heart to heart quilt, the pink one, the pink and white one that we made for her for going to university. I think it's in her closet. I have a feeling it's in her closet. Well, it might be in her closet, but we checked that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not in there. Okay. It turns out we think the quilt is in Tucson okay. with Heather, which actually is where it should be. I just thought it was in that in in her in her bedroom up here. Um, but March 15th, I will figure out a template for you. Oh, that'd be fantastic. So March 15th and is good. That's really good because I'm still here. Good. Okay. 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 And, um, and I have better internet here. So that's really good. Okay. And then, so whether it's the clamp or the, I have the MIDI, I have the maxi, I have the clamp. So that's Which all Which machine good. are you stitching on? Look at this baby. Oh, beautiful. Rose gold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. So, so you want your maxi hoop. Yeah, try the clamp hoop. Because I think that should, um, I think you might actually be able to use that without having to go down the template route. Okay. I love the clamp thing. It's really nice. And I also have, now, you know, we all, not we all, but whoever wanted to pay for it, I got the plus, so I have pinpoint placement. And I didn't know if that was good enough to place, you know, things. After. Is it the two-point placement, or have you got the new with the four-point yeah, placement? The two-point, because the new one only comes with the pro, you know, only comes with the, the really so, expensive. So my, my issue with the two-point placement is that when you're, aligning a quilting design you really need at least oh, yeah. three points because you want to be able to go this way and this way right. right and with two points you can only go in one direction true that is true. but if you i and i actually did an experiment um bill and sue live not far from here and they came over one day bill had been using the pinpoint placement on his sunshine cove quilt i think it was and having a little challenge with it and we had a contest to see which was more accurate pinpoint placement or my technique and it turns out that my technique is more accurate more my, of the time no that is no that i believe because i have realized i try to use the pinpoint every time i embroider something just because it's what i have but i have to say that um I now go back and check um, the four corners of the basting box again. Mm -hmm. because, like you said, it, it needs to be at least three points to really well, give you, the The pinpoint placement is fabulous if you are, let's say, positioning an applique shape or an embroidery design on a garment or on a quilt or anywhere because you only really need two places to do right. that alignment. For a quilting design, you're fitting a design around something else. Right, right. Okay. And in, in which case you need to go in, you need to look at both directions. And yes. pinpoint the, the two-point pinpoint placement can't do that. That's true. Yeah. Okay. 
No, Which is probably why they created the four point pinpoint placement on the plus machines. But, or the pro I was machines. actually surprised when I got pinpoint placement that it gives you all these, uh, I don't know how, nine uh, places that you could touch, but it only allows you to set two of them. Hmm. And I thought, well, why didn't they just give us the nine places or the <laughs> at least four, you know? So, but anyway, um, maybe they'll do an upgrade or an update. You know, yeah, I think right. the probe machine has four point placement. Yeah, well, that one I think the they've morphine. made it a lot better. Yeah, you can actually distort a little bit. Yeah. So, the question then would be too I do have software that helps, but it doesn't really write not for placement. But I was thinking software isn't going to do you any favors for placing a quilting design. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I will, I like your template idea though. That's a good idea. And I would try to do it that way. And I don't mind doing the sashing after, you know, to uh, as long as I know that it's not going to be scratchy on the back. Mm -mm. It'll be no soft. scratchy. No. Okay. Because okay. they're little, little girls, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no scratching involved. It's going to be, it's okay. going to be really nice and soft. Okay. Okay. Their favorite thing, they always say, I want my soft blankie that you made me. <laughs> like, yeah. So I don't want to lose my status as grandma makes a soft blankie. <laughs> oh, I love so, that. Well, I will good. see you. If if you're able to get back here on March 15th, um, I, I'll yeah, show you how to do I actually, the. I, I have, a, I was going to go to my other place in the West of Brittany and, you know, Brittany, but. There is really out in the middle of nowhere and there's not very good internet. But here I'm I'm gonna we actually changed plans, so I'm here. So that'll be good. Okay. So I'm in the southwest. Well, I'll be in the northwest next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in a couple of weeks then. Thank you for all your help. I really appreciate that. You are welcome. It's so nice to actually see you in person, Ruth. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Let me see. Polly, excuse me. Polly is here. Polly, coming to ask you to unmute. And. And then 29. Okay, so there we go. I got the pattern. So I didn't say it right. No, you did not. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Sarah, I'm in a really loud classroom. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can also hear the handful of people around you. Yeah, so um, but... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna very quickly hold up the table runner that I've been working on, but I'll catch you in two weeks to talk more. Beautiful. So Polly has been making the, uh, the Christmas ornament table runner. Polly's family owns a Christmas tree farm. So they do a lot of, Christmas decorating. This is beautiful, Polly. I love the colors that you've got going there, the greens with the golds on the top of it. And you made it to fit a, a seven foot long table. Yep, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for showing it to us. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. That actually is all of the questions that we had submitted today. And it has been so much fun hanging out with you guys and chatting and seeing the beautiful work that you are all doing. So we will be back in two weeks on March 15th for our next Mel's Get Together. Um, March is a five Friday month. So on March 29th, which is a fifth Friday, we will be having a big show and share. So anything that you've been working on, Meaning Alive Designs, bring it along on March 29th and share it. You never know who will be inspired by your color choices and thread choices. And, you know, it. today we just had so many different things Christine and Kim using yellow submarine quilting designs in not yellow submarine projects. I absolutely love that. I hope also that um, 
by March 29th, we'll have a whole bunch of Awakened Hearts to show off. Next Friday, we are having an Awakened Hearts stitch out. And that is going to be a ton of fun. If you like to come along and have a community to do a little bit of learning in and do some stitching in, we're going to be doing that next Friday from 9 a.m. till noon Pacific time. And I'm not altogether sure if that's Arizona time or not. I think the clocks haven't changed yet by then. Um, so... Next Friday, if you want to come and stitch up some Awakened Hearts, two weeks today for our regular Mel's get-together. So go off and do lots of stitching.